meditate on and study God's word together, we will flourish evermore. All right, today we are going to read Luke chapter 6, verses 37 to 42. And I am sitting outside in the warm sun today. We have been load shedding, that is, uh, without electricity the last two hours, and I just need to come and get warm. And so enjoying the sun, sorry, that means there may be some shadows that were created, but I will try to uh, do as little of that as possible. All right, verse 37. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. He, Jesus, told them a parable. Can a blind man lead a blind man? Will they not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone, when he is fully trained, will be like his teacher. Why do you see the speck? that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own. How can you say to your brother, brother, let me take out the speck that is in your eye. And when you yourself do not see the log that is in your own eye, you hypocrite. First, take the log out of your own eye, then you will see clearly to take out the speck that is in your brother's eye. All right, so we're going to start with our first question, what do we learn about God? All right. First of all, um, I think one of the things that I learned is that God cares about people. And the reason that I see this is that he uh, gives us instructions not to judge others, not to condemn others, to forgive others, to give to others. And I see that about him is that he cares about people. Oh, a little bit of cloud passing by, so maybe not as harsh, harsh shadows that are on the page. Uh, I also see that he is a teacher. We know that Jesus at this time is teaching the disciples, and so he is the teacher. Jesus is saying he is the teacher, and we are to become like him. He gives and he forgives. One thing that um, I do know from being in God's word is that he is a judge. We are not to judge, we are not to condemn, but he is. He is judge, he is authority. It is his job because, and as we have seen before, when Jesus speaks to others, he knows our hearts. He knows the hearts of people. He created us. Everything is his. He knows it intimately. And so he is able to judge. He also sets the standard. He is the measure. He sets right and wrong because he created everything. It is his world and he is the standard, and that's why he is able to judge. He knows our hearts. He sets the standards. He is able to judge. So what does a judge actually do? Uh, it is a huge saying uh, in today is don't judge me, don't judge me. What does that actually mean? mean? What do judges do? We in the states have juries that make decisions, but the judge is the ruler of the courtroom. 
and the judge has the final say. Now, in other countries, uh, they don't necessarily have juries, and the judge really is the final, ultimate decision maker. And that is what a judge does. So we are being told, don't make a decision, a final condemning. So to condemn means to pronounce guilty, an unfavorable judgment or verdict. And he is saying, you are not the final verdict. You don't have that final say. Uh, so if we look at then, I'm going to move on to what does it say about man, about people. We are told not to judge. We are not to have the final verdict. I should put no final verdict. Now, it does not say do not discipline. It doesn't say do not correct. It doesn't say do not teach. It doesn't say do not speak the truth. It doesn't say do not oppose those who are wrong. It says don't judge. So let me give you an example as I was thinking about this. Uh, we are walking in the park. The park we go to, uh, part of the side is for dogs. You can let your dogs run and enjoy themselves. The other side, a very smaller part, is a botanical gardens and dogs are not allowed. In fact, there's signs up everywhere about but people walk their dogs on that side all the time. And so it irritates me. And I have a tendency to judge, to make a final verdict about the owners when I see them walking their dogs or when their dogs leave poop, especially on the walkway. I have a tendency to think their owner is so rude. Their owner is thoughtless. Their owner doesn't care. Their owner is mean. I am making judgments. I'm making a final verdict on something I really don't know. Their owner might actually be a very pleasant person and somebody, if I got to know them, might be somebody that will be a good friend. Their owner may not have realized the rules or their owner may have broken the rules on purpose, but it's not my place to make a judgment on their character. Should, can I correct them? Well, this doesn't say don't correct them. So maybe one time I could actually say, hey, did you know you're not supposed to have your dogs on this side of the park? But I am not to judge who they are as a person or sentence them to any kind of judgment. And so we are not to judge, but that doesn't mean we are to accept what is wrong. We are to help people, especially fellow believers who are struggling. We are to, as we do our own children, correct them and teach them. We are to speak truth to people. But if we look further down, it says, can a blind man lead a blind man? We are hypocrites if we complain about something or correct people when we are struggling with the same thing. And that's what he's saying. I, I believe that's what's being said here is that if you are struggling with something, don't pick on somebody else for the same thing. Fix what's going on with you before you help someone in that same situation. And so we are to, um, I think in a sense, I'm just going to say we are to worry about ourselves before we pick or correct others. I think we are also supposed to 
again, it's, I love this. A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone, when he is fully trained, will be like his teacher. We are to be working on becoming more and more like Jesus, our teacher. And so we are to strive to be more like Jesus. Do I think it's wrong if we say, hey, I am really struggling with this. Can you help me? Or I am struggling with this. I see you are too. Maybe we can keep each other accountable. It's more of being a hypocrite when you correct someone and don't admit that you're struggling with the same thing and don't see that in yourself. And that is what makes us a hypocrite. I think we can go back to the beginning. We are to forgive. So people, uh, we need to be forgiving. And we need to be giving. And it says here, this good measure is not the measure of judging. It is the measure of giving. It comes after. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure. In fact, I want to read from the New Living Translation. It says right here in verse 38, Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full. Press down, shaken together. To make room for more, running over, poured into your lap. So when we are given, we have the promise from God. And I want to have that add up at the top. That God promises to give as we give. And he promises to give abundantly. I think about when I think about the terms uh, press down, shaken. You know, it reminded me I took a barista course and when you put the grounds in, then you use a tamper to press it down and get all of the air, the space out and get all of those coffee grounds compacted solid together. And in fact, after pulling the shot, then you dump it into uh, the waste bin and it comes out in this cool little clump all stuck together. And uh, even in the kitchen as I'm refilling uh, our, I would say sweetener because we use xylitol or erythritol or container, you know, I'll always shake it down uh, to make sure that I can put the whole refill bag in there or the flowers that we use uh, doing the same thing to, to make sure everything fits. But not only does God give so that it fits, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, it's actually running over into our lap. And that is such a uh, cool picture of God's generous spirit. And so I'm going to add that in there as well, that he is so incredibly generous, generous to overflowing into our lap. And so uh, such a beautiful picture of his generosity to us. And of course, we see that because he sent his only son to pay the price um, for our sin. All right, so let's move on then to how can we obey? And obviously, I need to do a better job of not, and I hate to call it judging, but I'm going to say not judging character based on an action. And I think that's where we have the tendency to judge. We judge a person's heart, their character, based on what they're doing. And God is like, you don't know their heart. Yes, correct. Maybe correct what they are doing. Obviously, if it's not, you know, you're... you're picking on them because you struggle with it as well and it makes you look better 
uh, to correct, to put them down. Uh, but it's okay to correct and to teach and to discipline the action. Um, but uh, obviously by my story about the dogs in the park, I need to do a better job not judging a person's character by their actions. Uh, so for me, that is uh, something I want to strive to obey. Uh, for you, it could be something different, uh, maybe being more giving or forgiving, uh, to understanding that God does set standards and, and to strive to be more like Jesus. And that's why we are in his word, learning about his character so that we can be more like him, like his character. Uh, as we grow in our journey, in our walk, and in our relationship with him. Uh, so for you, um, what is it? Would love to hear in the comments how you want to grow to be more obedient um, to, to the Lord and, his, uh, and what he would have you to do. And finally, who can we share with? Hopefully this week, you can share Maybe a simple explanation. Like I said, it's been on my heart because I think people get the term do not judge confused with other things that we as believers, as people that follow God and know and are learning his standards and learning his promises. It's okay for us to teach and to speak truth, to oppose those who are doing wrong, but not judge their character or put a final verdict on their life. I will have to say that um, my favorite baseball team has been under attack for the last six years. And somebody once said, or and I see it other places often, but somebody once said, once a cheater, always a cheater. That's a judgment call. You are convicting somebody and telling them that their character can never change. You have given a final verdict. That's so untrue. God can change the hearts of anybody. Uh, and so maybe uh, this, this passage will lead you to be able to share with somebody what it really, what is God really saying? We are not to judge people's hearts and give a final verdict. Maybe somebody needs to hear that God is an amazing, generous giver. That when we give, he gives in not just good measure, overflowing measure when we are also giving. Whatever it is, I pray that this week you will find someone to do this Bible study with. Uh, or to share what you have learned about the character of God and how he is calling you to be obedient. Thanks for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful week. We will see you next week for Monday Meditation and our next Bible study together. Thank you for joining me for today's Bible study, and I hope you have a wonderful week and weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye, y'all.